future holds, but now we need to get ready and be prepared. We have Urko Surututsa from uh, Mondragon University. He's the coordinator of the Data Analysis Research Group and Cybersecurity of Mondragon University. What are the relations between uh, university and daily needs of companies? And what is the situation in which we would need to be uh, in, uh, in the future? I'd like to thank um, you for your invitation. Thank you to the provincial government for inviting me. Eta baita ere, bamen egoteko, eta, eta, bueno, ba, ziurren parte bez... Thank you all, sir, because it's a great opportunity to, opportunity to be part of ziur. In the, this last two days, I was uh, uh, attracted by specific topics, uh, technology transfer and talent, talent uh, transfer. There's a, um, a ranking of universities, and the Basque uni universities are um, in the on first uh, uh, positions, especially for technology transfer. We are amongst the 15 uh, best uh, universities in Spain, so we are happy about that in the last two days. Because of the presence of CIUR and because you're here, and because we we are at the end of the cybersecurity edition um, conference. Well, companies are start to tell us that they need very, uh, people. They need spe specialized uh, staff. And sometimes I feel like Elon Musk. We are selling cars before manufacturing them. I feel quite weird. I, I'm, I'm, I'm frightened because it's not about uh, merchandising and um, selling people to companies. We need a deeper transfer of talent. And it should be ta talent transfer, but uh, it, w people have to be well prepared, well trained, and we have to go beyond transfer. It's not just giving companies uh, specialized uh, workers. We require more. We need to work with um, cutting edge technology and university. I'll give you some data. I'm going to mention some uh, data because I don't really mind about about figures. But people say that in two years' time, we'll need two million qualified uh, workers, engineers and others. We'll need more talent. But in cybersecurity, in 2020, 2022, we will need 250,000 people in Spain and in the world 1.5 million people that are well trained in cybersecurity. But we need people. That's the, that's the reality. We need talent. And we also in university, we need people. We uh, deal with, uh, we do research and we have research groups. We work with other um, uh, universities and we miss people that are duly trained. We need more technical people. And we are looking for that. And companies around us need these people. I could give you figures. What is the this need exactly? How can we remedy this uh, scarcity? But I think this is uh, opens new perspectives, and we need to find these people. So it's between the three uh, Basque provinces. Uh, we know that the situation is that we have a great potential at regional level. Machine tooling is very important in the Basque country. So we, if we pool every, all these companies here, we are on the top uh, section. So there's a great opportunity for Basque companies. We need to push and uh, encourage uh, R&D. We, we need to uh, improve competitiveness in our companies to maintain this, this uh, un entrepreneurial spirit, and we need to improve training. That's something that you mention in, uh, all the time, that you need tr trained people and qualified people. So we, we need to give you these people, and that's our potential. Technology and knowledge and expertise. How can we do this transfer uh, with these two concepts in a natural way? Let's concentrate on cybersecurity, university and technology centers. 
do transfer expertise to uh, companies. And cybersecurity companies can uh, improve their technology thanks to this uh, uh, cutting edge uh, research uh, work so that in turn they can sell their products and services to companies. We have so many companies, we have so many people involved, so, much, so many markets out there. We also have technical centers, universities, because we do this transfer towards uh, the, the industrial world, especially in our university. You know what is our mission and our vision. The uh, generation and transfer of knowledge. I'd like to underline this uh, piece of data. This catalog is uh, is a catalog that INSIBE uh, designed um, more than a year ago. Where you can see Madrid. This is the catalog and the map of R&D and I knowledge in uh, cybersecurity. Here you see in Gipuzkoa, we are uh, on third position. And some of them are missing. Yes, uh, Mondragon University, Teit, Technalia, a couple of groups in the University of the Basque Country, Ikerlan, but some of them are not there. They're not in the, on the map still. If we include these three companies, uh, these three centers would be, would be in the second position. Companies, industry, this is very powerful in the Basque Country, very powerful groups in cybersecurity. We have these people, we have these companies. Let's see how this transfer, this talent transfer can be done. You know that universities, transfer talent to cybersecurity companies, but also to industrial businesses. A transfer of talent and talent itself goes to uh, specific areas of uh, production in our society. Well, if you've... As, Sometimes I, ha um, I can't really understand how degrees and masters and PhDs are organized. You have um, many curriculum, curriculums. You have go to university. You do uh, your master's courses, your master's programs, your doctorate programs. In Mondragon, we have four-year uh, degrees, and we, then we have um, on-the-job practice. And then we have... Um, um, vocational training and on-the-job on training. Then we have professional insertion. We have uh, insertion in the labor world for our students. In our university, in the second year, our students uh, already start working. If you want to work, uh, you can work half-time in companies around the university. Once they finish their uh, graduate level, they get to the labor wor world and they start working. Then they have master programs, one, ye one year masters and two year masters. Uh, during the, your master's degree, you can work and, and uh, learn at the same time and be trained at the same time. And then we have third cycle for our graduate students, PhD, and this is what we call the dual system, working and uh, learning at the same time doing your studies. And most of our students are now working. And once they finish their studies, they find jobs. But we need more people, especially in engineering and in technical studies. We need a lot of students. We need more people. And we have to work from the bottom up in uh, schools, in secondary and primary schools. And we need to look for more people that want to follow these studies. Uh, but what about PhDs? I think that's important. If you want to be uh, more innovative, um, to, if you want to be good, we need specialized people. We need people with PhDs. But what happens? What about a transfer of talent? There's a catalog of master courses in cy cybersecurity and the places where these masters are taught. Madrid, 24 masters. 16 research groups, 24 masters, a lot of companies working in Barcelona, in Madrid, but what about Gipuzkoa? One, one master's course. And there are many uh, 
candidates. At least four people, five people have asked for that. And they asked me to, uh, to work in the world of cybersecurity. And somebody told me that in two years, they will, they will need 50 people. And I said, it's impossible. It cannot cover that. We, I want to be positive like Alex. I'll give you very positive data. What are the solutions that we uh, wanted to provide? A year ago, in March, the provincial government in, of Gipuzkoa asked us to create uh, and to, to, to launch a, a new master's program, master course, and we started to work. We wanted to create this master's course. And we needed to define the skills, content, tuition, and all the elements that have to uh, be included in a master's, uh, master's course, how the transfer is going to be done, is there work, is there just studies for the students, uh, how is the uh, plan going to be uh, applied. We already had an online master course, and so we took advantage of what we had in order to create synergy. So the uh, provincial government sent, sent, us, sent us this challenge. So we have a specific educational model What, but the model is not that important. We, we're talking about technical skills. They're important, indeed. But we try to do more. We want our students to be uh, able to learn. We uh, teach them how to learn so that they can do things for themselves. That's one of our goals. And beyond technology, for me, What's important is to train on different skills, different competences, how to work in teams, work, uh, group work, how to motiv motivate people. Um, we need people that are, who are able to solve problems. We want these people to uh, start working in companies in the Basque Country. We had a 10-year experience already in uh, vocational training and higher education, but it was a good moment to review what we already had and to include new subjects in order to uh, compare with uh, our future needs. So we were in contact with companies for, for several months. We contacted a cybersecurity company and industrial companies too. We wanted to ask them, what are the most impo important areas for you? Where do, do you need more people? That's something that we didn't do for our previous master course. And most of the qualifications are now being set up in, in, in that way. For me, it was important to review content. I'm not going to tell you all the story, but here you see, uh, for instance, auditing and the elements of cybersecurity. Within that comparison between our past plans and the new plans, we decided to reduce some of the content and increase some of uh, other areas. So w what is the, uh, our master's design? What is the framework for our master's course? Uh, most, mostly our students start to work on the master's course on the second year, and then they start to work half time in uh, companies, uh, local companies, and they start to, uh, finding jobs. And in fact, companies need our students. 30% of those who finish uh, are graduate uh, students enroll in a, in a master's course. Others don't need to continue uh, their studies because they found a job. We need specialization. We need these people to continue studying and to, and to specialize. So it's we have uh, 20 credits uh, with uh, of, and 500 hours for practice time. It's dual training, that's what we call it. It's about sharing uh, studies and work, and then 20 more units, credits for the master's uh, tesina. And I suppose that some of our students here are now r uh, writing their tesinas. So, this master's course is for professional in nature. It's for professionals. From the academic point of view, with so little time available, we cannot really have an academic master, but it's a professional one. I don't know if it's negative, because students need skills, they need the experience, and youngsters need this. They need technology con 
te advanced technological content. Then uh, what's important is uh, that this uh, studies lead to PhD. So at the end of this uh, master course, Uh, you can have uh, more outcomes because people ha can have three years experience and then t they can follow this master course afterwards for more qualification. So if this is open to all types of people, people also who are now working in businesses. So it's a, uh, on Fridays, people go to class and then you can still work in your company and then follow these studies. We have experts from companies who are teachers and there's uh, experience transfer with those teachers and the rest is mm, done online. And that's why we work, how we worked with, uh, with this program. It's a pleasure to say that in most of our subject matters, well, we had the presence of uh, Basque uh, companies, thanks to them, we uh, have been able to transfer experience. It's not an academic master course. It's not. It's a place of exchange, uh, bottom up, and there's a lot of knowledge that is being transferred and shared. Our team. Or goiko laurak doktore agea tesia gindakoak. You can see at the top the four doctors, the four of us uh, who've already presented their dis dissertations, our dissertations. One of them uh, is an expert in fishing. Two of us have worked more on industrial matters. And then the last column are our associate professors. Well, that's a long list, in fact, uh, with many people who have collaborated with us, uh, sometimes in students' work experience sessions. Well, obviously, uh, because of um, our young program, uh, we were very, very keen on having a lot of contacts with experts, with technology centers, with uh, firms, companies in the industrial sector, and we managed it. We did it. Uh, we hope that that interest will continue in future. We're also hoping to be able to attract more industrial companies and um, cybersecurity firms, because there, there are very few right now on our list. So is that enough? You were talking about some one million people who need to be trained in this field uh, to be able to uh, cover all the market needs. Well, we're helping a little bit in Mondragon uh, at our three sites, one here in the Basque Country, another one in Mexico, and another one in Colombia, which will be part of a solution. Um, resorting, uh, if we need experts in Europe, We'll probably have to resort to places outside Europe as well for experts. Uh, experts not just in technical matters, uh, but this is very cross-cutting. Uh, we need to give good responses uh, for connected industrial equipment in manufacturing sites. That's what we need, people who are responsible, or is it people who are responsible for that type of equipment, connected equipment, where well, it's a little bit of a play on words. But really, uh, what we need is people with knowledge, technical knowledge, but people, after all.